Hello again and welcome to Thursday evening, our live webinar, The Celtic Soul, Praying with Celtic Holy Women. And this evening, we are focusing on Saint Dimna, a good Irish name, Saint Dimna of Achill Island. And she's certainly the patron of survivors and healers. Now there's one. And in Psalm 6, verse 2, we read, O God, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. Our first stop, according to Bridget Mary Meehan and Regina Madonna Oliver, they say was the Sunday liturgy at St. Dimpness Church at Tidav Tidavanet. What an unusual name, Tidavanet, or Tidavanet, whichever, which is a short distance from Monaghan town and Monaghan, Castle Blaney in Monaghan is where my granddad was born. It was a well-attended and lively liturgy, she said. A conversation with the parishioner led us to Ellie Sherry, who knew where Dimpness Well was located. Ellie insisted on accompanying us to St. Dimpness Well. About a mile's walk through a privately owned farm, 76-year-old Ellie amazed us with her agility. Oh, she said, climbing over a locked gate and guiding us over as well. Sure, I look my, I took my nitroglycerine and guided us over. But she said, I'll be fine. <laughs> Fancy taking your GTN spray. The field where St. Dibner's well is located is filled with thistles tall grass and mud. Near, nearby is an altar and sign marking the well and a statue of Saint Dimpna with rags tied around her waist, apparently items left in thanksgiving for prayers answered. Ellie informed us that the locals do visit the well and that there used to be sacred celebrations there but now it is no longer a public gathering place since the land on which it stands is in private hands. Back at our car and bidding our spry guide goodbye, we drove to Cavan and then on to Lavi to visit another holy well of St. Dimpna. Here we met over 80-year-old Rose Murray who showed us the stone well located in the middle of a river. It was raining and the walk down to the well is a bit steep. Owen Clark, an elderly Irishman, had just driven to the well to get holy water for his ailing wife. Then he took our water bottle and his own. He walked down the incline to the well. He filled them and returned, giving us ours and carrying his up the steps to the waiting car where his ailing wife waited. What a kind man. Owen was an incarnation of the deep faith of people in the power of God's love, present to them in the sacred water of a saint's well. What an example of the indigenous faith that continues to pass down from generation to generation. Saint Dimpna was a saint who traveled from place to place. <clears throat> so we followed her route to Akal Island as we ascended higher and higher on the narrow mountainous road. Sheep were grazing on the mountainside while opposite the wild waves of the Atlantic Ocean crashed against the rocks. The drive was filled with switchbacks that got a little frightening. For many miles we saw no one. Then it dawned on us 
we had taken the longer winding coastal road. We stopped, we asked for directions, and at last found our way to the hotel on Ackle Sound, where we met Breege O'Brien, a young school teacher who would be our guide and informant about all the things about Dimpna. Now encountering Saint Dimpna, according to legend, <clears throat> Damien, Damon, Dimpna's father, was a pagan king who ruled over the kingdom of Oriel, an area covering modern-day Monaghan, Fermanagh, Southern Tyrone, and part of Armagh and the Louth counties. Brona, his wife, converted to Christianity and she raised her daughter Dimpna as a Christian, excuse me. <clears throat> when Dimpna was 14, her mother died. For a long time after the loss of his wife, Damon grieved and developed a serious depression. In order to help him, his servants searched the land for a woman equal to his wife. The only woman they could find to equal her was his daughter, Dimpna. Damon proposed marriage to his daughter. Shocked at the threat of incest, Dimpna fled south to Drumfuhrer, where she stopped and asked for a drink of water. The townsfolk refused, fearing the wrath of her father. Because of this refusal, Dimpner predicted that never would there be a well in Drumfuhrer, and so it is true to this day. Dimpner and her companions crossed the Sleeve Bia Mountains and found a well on the side of the mountain at Caldevanet. This well has been a place of individual and group pilgrimage down through the centuries. In Tidavanet, Dimpna asked the village blacksmith for coals to light a fire. She had no container to hold them, but offered her apron. According to the legend, he placed the coals in her apron and they did not burn through. The fugitive stayed in Tidavanet in a house where Dimpna performed a miracle. This feat accounts for the name of the town Tai meaning house and Davnet meaning Divna. Divnet. Wow. To commemorate her stay in this village, a church was founded which became the burial place of the kings of Oriel. Then, according to folklore, hmm, Dimpna went to the village of Lavi in County Cavan. And there in Lavi, one of the oldest church sites is dedicated to St. Dimpna. Nearby are Dimpna's stone, which once bore the imprint of her knees, and the holy pool, where the footprints of a nunshod coat are visible on the stones of the riverbed. This is said to be the coat that carried Dimpna across the water westwards to Ackle and killed of Dimpna's stay in Ackle did not last long. She fled Ireland from the west coast when her father's soldiers followed her to the island. The travellers escaped to Antwerp and found a hiding place at Zamal near Giel, a small town southwest, sorry, southeast of Antwerp. Here they erected dwellings for themselves close to the ruins of a monastery dedicated to St. Martin of Tours. Damon kept up his pursuit until he found Dimpna and when she again refused his demands to marry him, he had her companion Jennerban beheaded. He then beheaded his own daughter. In that instant, Damon's insane lust for his daughter was healed. Some local people in Giel buried the bodies of the martyrs in a cave. Later, when the bodies were exhumed to be buried in the church, they were found in two white coffins made of stone that was not native to the area. 
As a result, the story circulated that they were buried by angels. The relics were moved to a church dedicated to St. Dimpna, and devotion to the saint began. People began to bring the mentally ill family members to this site, and soon word spread that people who were mentally ill were being cured at Dimpna's grave. Gradually, a home was built for them, and in 1286, a hospital was founded at Deal for the care of the mentally ill. For this reason, St. Dimpna is known as patron of people suffering from mental illness, depression, and epilepsy. In 1349, a new church was constructed to accommodate the large number of pilgrims pilgrimages to the site. These pilgrimages consisted of a novena, nine days of prayer and penance. Afterwards, some pilgrims remained in the homes of Gil families. This practice of family care for people with mental sickness became known as the Gil system of psychiatric care. A Gil family became a foster family adopting a patient and providing room and board. The patients participated in the usual activities of the town and in 1936 a US doctor Charles D. Aring visited Gill and is quoted in Bridge O'Brien's article in the Ackle Island Journal as saying a 12 year old girl with a younger brother in her charge was also caring for two patients while her parents were in town or in the fields. She was not perturbed in the least by our visit. With consummate consideration, she pretended her charge, sorry, she presented her charges and the children of the village learned by experience and tradition that mental illness and a mental disease is neither fearful nor amusing and like their parents became skilled in the art of caring for the mentally ill. Isn't that fascinating? Our primary source for the legends and places associated with St. Dimpna is Breach O'Brien's series of articles on the legacy of St. Dimpna. We are indebted to her for her articles, interviews and tour. This material is based on her extensive research and used with her kind permission. And interestingly, some scholars think that the St. Dimpna of Ackle and Dimpna of Giel were not the same person. A point they make to support this contention is that if Dimpna had crossed the sea from Ireland, she would not have come in through Antwerp, since it was not on a direct route from Ireland. Second, they considered the evidence of the crozier of St. Dimpna that is displayed in the museum in Dublin, and argued that the crozier is a symbol of a church leader, and therefore, if St. Dimpna founded a church in Ireland, she more than likely would have stayed in Ireland. Scholars also point out that the story of St. Dimpna of Giel may have come from a European folk tradition that portrayed the recurring theme of the incestuous father who pursued an illegitimate relationship with his daughter. Still, there is a strong tradition that St. Dimpna of Ackle and Giel were the same woman. St. Dimpna's site in Kildevanet is located in the gently sloping hills of the southeastern shore of Achill Island. The site around the unroofed church was restored in recent years. For centuries this church was the only church in Akko. There are stories of people coming from all over the island, carrying coffins to bury their dead in this cemetery. People still stop here for quiet prayer, and many attend an annual mass at the site. 
The well is situated on the shore of the bay near this church and cemetery and is sometimes covered by the tide. However, it is a fresh water well, the traditional pattern, the practice of saying prayers while walking round a holy site or well several times was popular at St. Dibna's site at Kildavanet. And according to Bridge O'Brien, pilgrims at St. Dibna's well walked around the well in a circular pattern reciting seven Hail Marys each time. Each time they drop a stone in the well and bow three times in intervals to acknowledge Tobari and Domneg, the well of the king, and Dimpna. Then the pilgrims take water from the well. If they should see a fish in the water, this could indicate good luck, marriage, or the death in a family, depending on the way the fish was lying. Mm. They would leave a lock of their hair on a piece of, or a piece of their clothing at the well in thanksgiving for a healing or a blessing received. What a fascinating story. I think we've got a picture here of St. Dibna. Let me just see if I can bring it up to the camera. Just bear with me, page 89. Can you see the picture of St. Dibna? She's only a young, a young girl, really but a fascinating story. So page 89, here we go. I hope I'm not boring the pants off here. It says here, celebrating St. Dimpna's gifts for our lives, Breed O'Brien sees certain patterns emerging from the life of Dimpna, which speak to today's society. The first, kind outreach to those who are rejected by society, such as the mentally ill, and to adherence to ideals in spite of persecution. And thirdly, the triumph of female integrity over male sexual violence. Wow. Well, let us just have a time of quietness, I think and gently recall God's word to you. Let us just be still. Be still in the presence of God, in the presence of these Celtic holy women, in the presence of Dimna, who suffered much for her belief at the hands of her own father. So let us just gather our thoughts, Take a deep breath. And in the stillness of this moment, let us just be aware of the sacred footprints of women who've gone before us, who lived an exemplary life in the most difficult of times. But they had something that we desperately crave for. They had an inner conviction, an inner knowing that they were living the life that God called them to live. So let us find this narrow road leading down to the Ackle Sands. If you've been to Holy Island off the northeast coast, Lindisfarne is called you can only cross when the tide is out. Let's imagine that here, Ackle Island is approached when the tide is out. And when the tide is out, you can see the well, a freshwater well. Well, today the tide is out. It's just gone out. And as you cross the sands, you can feel the warmth of the rays of Brother Sun on your feet, the freshness in the air that you breathe into your lungs, there's a salt in the air, a crispness. And it's a beautiful day. 
and as you walk along the shore of Atal Sound, you see in the distance something of a medieval structure. And as the tide goes out now, it's becoming more apparent that it's not a church, it's a round circular stone object, beautifully carved and very, very ancient. And in your being, as you go towards it, there's an excitement. The spirit of Dimpna is with us now. She's calling us to come. She's calling us to bathe in her water and to share that healing water with those whom we love, who are living with mental illness. And we are there. We've reached the well. And as we look down, we can't believe that this is fresh water where it's as if there's a glass top that prevents seawater contaminating it. But that would be the gift of Saint Dimpna and the power of God. And that inner voice in you is that of Saint Dimpna. This young woman Celtic woman. She's guiding you to place your hands in the well. And as you cup your hand, you bring your head forward and your hands forward to your mouth and you gently drink this water. And you become aware of its taste. It's something like you've never tasted before. There's a purity in the water, a freshness. And as you drink it, your third eye opens. And standing at the well, is this beautiful young woman and you ask her name and she says I am Dimpna thank you for coming to my well please drink of this healing water for every drop is infused with the love of God a love born out of suffering for you. And I have waited a long time for you to come here today. I invite you now to take another drink and gently sip it this time and feel the healing properties of this sacred water go right up to your mind clearing your mind, releasing all fear and tension, and more importantly, painful memories. Memories of your past, even other lifetimes. And just be aware that through Dimpness presence here, she's allowing us to erase from our memory all pain, rejection, even fear. And there's a love flowing in our veins. We're feeling re-energized. And we're 
are guided now to come and sit with our back to the well, sat facing Divna. And we're struck by the pattern on her clothes, old Gaelic writing and designs, intricately woven. And you look at her hands, and you can see that they're the hands of a young woman who has toiled much. But there's a presence about her, a gentleness. She encourages you to take her hands. And as you do, there's a connection, an instant connection like a karmic connection that you already knew her in previous lifetimes. She could have been Magdalena. She could have been the mother of Jesus, but it doesn't matter who she was. Right now she is Dimpna and she's come to empower your heart, to take back your power and embrace your divinity as a child of God. And if you are living with despair or depression, she wants to take that from you too. And she invites you to share the name of loved ones now she opens her hands and she asks you to place the memory into our hands of those whom you love who are suffering and struggling with mental illness, depression or even fear, anxiety or phobias. And you watch her do something you've never seen before. She closes her hands like that of a nun, prayer hands. And she places the closed hands in the well and opens them like a butterfly's wings. And she releases into the sacred water those whom you love who are struggling or who may be worried at this time. And she releases them to the light. And now she, as she takes her hands out of the well, she blesses you with the water. And she asks you to remember this time to remember her. And as you look around at the well again, to form a blessing of gratitude, you say thank you for this opportunity, but when you turn around to say goodbye to Dimna, she's gone. But she's left you a gift, the clutter ring, the clutter ring is an ancient ring of marriage that's used by in divine circles of the two hands clasping the heart. And the two hands are yours and the heart is that of God. And you pick it up and you place it on your finger and it fits. And now, you sense a great weight released from you. The worries of the world and those whom you love, who are struggling and hurting and suffering so needlessly and unnecessary, 
you know that they've been taken care of. And that they have been blessed in this world by Saint Timna. And interestingly at this time you can see the tide coming in and it's time to go. Because soon this sacred well will be covered by sea water. And as you meander across the sands and up to the narrow gate and up the lane, the tide is fully in and you look back to say au revoir. There is no well there. And now you awaken you open your eyes in the stillness of this moment and you feel refreshed, replenished and at peace. <clears throat> and now we pray the closing prayer of this beautiful, beautiful woman, Saint Tim. Saint Dimpna, object of abuse, you who knew fear and fled the incestuous demands of your father, be Anamkara, be a sole friend to women who experience rape, violence and abuse, especially at the hands of family members. Accompany them on their journey to freedom and empower all those who are struggling at this hour with all forms of mental illness. Let them know your forgiveness, God's forgiveness and God's wholeness in their lives and in yours. Amen. So we say peace and blessing from this amazing woman, Saint Dimitri. And hopefully our next session is looking at St. Samantha of Clonbrony, the wise soul friend. In County Longford in Ireland. So for now, I wish you a blessed evening. I thank you for joining me and I hope you'll come back again soon. Good night. God bless you and take care till we meet again.